Question 1. The primary reason for having special endorsements for tank vehicles is A. They have a higher center of gravity. B. They are more prone to rollovers. C. They carry liquids. Answer. B. They are more prone to rollovers. Tank vehicles have a unique shape and liquid cargo, which can shift, making them more susceptible to rollovers. Question 2. When hauling liquids in bulk, surge can cause A. Increased stopping distance B. Reduced visibility C. Improved traction Answer A. Increased stopping distance The movement of liquid can push the vehicle forward, increasing the stopping distance. Question 3. Baffled tanks A. Eliminate all liquid movement B. Control side-to-side -side liquid movement C. Control front-to-back liquid movement Answer C. Control front-to-back liquid movement Baffles are bulkheads that help control the forward and backward surge of liquid. Question 4. An outage or ullage is A. The amount of liquid in the tank B. The amount of empty space left in a tank C. The weight of the liquid Answer B. The amount of empty space left in a tank. This space allows for expansion of the liquid. Question 5. If your tanker has no baffles, you should be especially cautious when A. Starting or stopping B. Making turns C. Driving uphill Answer A. Starting or stopping. Without baffles, liquid can surge back and forth, affecting control of the vehicle. Question 6. A full tank of dense liquid, like some acids, may exceed A. Weight limits B. Height limits C. Width limits Answer. A. Weight limits Dense liquids can be very heavy, even in small amounts. Question 7. When driving a tanker, you should A. Brake hard in turns B. Take turns at full speed C. Increase following distance Answer. C. Increase following distance. This provides more time to react to traffic conditions and control the vehicle. Question 8. To control surge, you should A. Make quick lane changes B. Brake suddenly C. Start and stop gradually Answer. C. Start and stop gradually this helps in controlling the movement of the liquid inside the tank. Question 9. The amount of liquid to load into a tank depends on A. The amount of insulation in the tank B. The legal weight limits C. The color of the liquid Answer. B. The legal weight limits. You must ensure the weight of the loaded vehicle does not exceed legal limits. Question 10. If a tanker has a manhole cover, it should be A. Left open for ventilation B. Closed tight C. Covered with a cloth Answer. B. Closed tight. This ensures no liquid spills out and no contaminants get in. Question 11. Tankers are most likely to roll over when A. They are half full B. They are empty C. They are full. Answer. A. They are half full. Partially filled tankers have a higher center of gravity, making them more prone to rollovers. Question 12. When inspecting a tanker, you should pay special attention to A. Tires. B. Lights. C. The radio. Answer. A. Tires. Due to the heavy loads, tires on tankers can be under a lot of stress. Question 13. Liquid cargo can decrease stability, leading to A. Increased speed B. Rollovers C. Improved braking Answer. B. Rollovers. The movement of liquid can affect the balance and stability of the vehicle. Question 14. When loading a tanker with multiple compartments, it's important to A. Load the heaviest compartment first B. 
Load the lightest compartment first. C. Load all compartments equally. Answer. A. Load the heaviest compartment first. This helps in maintaining the stability of the vehicle. Question 15. If your tanker is equipped with a shutoff valve, it should be A. Open while driving. B. Closed while driving. C. Only used in emergencies. Answer. B. Closed while driving. This prevents accidental spills. Question 16. When driving a tanker with flammable liquids, you should avoid A. Tunnels B. Highways C. Residential areas Answer A. Tunnels Some tunnels prohibit the transport of flammable liquids due to safety concerns. Question 17. The most common reason for tanker truck explosions is A. Overloading B. Electrical sparks C. Vapor from flammable liquid Answer. C. Vapor from flammable liquid. Vapors can ignite and cause explosions. Question 18. When unloading a tanker, you should A. Leave the engine running B. Turn off the engine C. Disconnect the battery Answer. B. Turn off the engine this reduces the risk of ignition. Question 19. If a tanker starts to skid, you should A. Steer in the opposite direction of the skid. B. Steer in the direction you want to go. C. Brake hard. Answer. B. Steer in the direction you want to go. This helps regain control of the vehicle. Question 20. Before loading or unloading a flammable liquid, you should a. Ground the tanker. B. Leave all lights on. C. Start the engine. Answer. A. Ground the tanker. This prevents static electricity, which can ignite vapors. Question 21. The stopping distance of a tanker is blank compared to other trucks. A. Shorter. B. Longer. C. The same. Answer. B. Longer. Due to the movement of liquid cargo, tankers require a longer distance to come to a complete stop. Question 22. When driving a tanker, you should avoid A. Quick stops. B. Using mirrors. C. Using turn signals. Answer. A. Quick stops. Sudden stops can cause the liquid to surge forward increasing stopping distance. Question 23. If you see a placard on a tanker, it means A. The tanker is empty. B. The tanker is carrying hazardous materials. C. The tanker is new. Answer. B. The tanker is carrying hazardous materials. Placards are used to indicate the type of hazardous material being transported. Question 24. The best way to take a curve in a tanker is A. At a consistent speed B. Speeding up in the middle of the curve C. Slowing down in the middle of the curve Answer A. At a consistent speed This helps in maintaining control of the vehicle. Question 25. If you hear a loud bang while driving a tanker, you should A. Continue driving B. Stop and check for a blown tire. C. Speed up. Answer. B. Stop and check for a blown tire. A loud noise could indicate a tire blowout. Question 26. The most dangerous time to drive a tanker is A. When it's fully loaded. B. When it's empty. C. When it's half full. Answer. C. When it's half full, the movement of the liquid in a partially filled tanker can make it unstable. Question 27. When driving a tanker on a downgrade, you should A. Shift to a higher gear B. Shift to a lower gear C. Use only the brakes Answer. B. Shift to a lower gear 
This helps control the speed without relying solely on the brakes. Question 28. If a tanker catches fire, the first thing you should do is A. Use the fire extinguisher B. Disconnect the tractor C. Call for help Answer B. Disconnect the tractor. This prevents the fire from spreading to the entire vehicle. Question 29. Tankers require special driving skills because A. They are longer than other trucks B. They have a higher center of gravity C. They are wider than other trucks Answer B. They have a higher center of gravity. This makes them more prone to rollovers. Question 30. When checking the brakes on a tanker, you should A. Look for leaks B. Check for air pressure C. Both A and B Answer C. Both A and B It's important to ensure there are no leaks and that the air pressure is within the recommended range. Question 31. When driving a tanker in strong winds, you should A. Speed up to get out of the wind faster B. Slow down and be cautious C. Stop and wait for the wind to die down Answer B. Slow down and be cautious. High winds can affect the stability of a tanker. Question 32. The best way to prevent rollovers is to A. Dry faster B. Keep the cargo tank full at all times C. Drive slowly around curves and turns Answer. C. Drive slowly around curves and turns. Taking turns too fast can lead to rollovers, especially with tankers. Question 33. If you are unsure about the weight of your tanker, you should A. Guess the weight B. Continue driving C. Stop at the nearest way station Answer C. Stop at the nearest way station. It's important to ensure you are not exceeding weight limits. Question 34. When driving a tanker in rainy conditions, you should A. Increase your speed B. Use cruise control C. Increase your following distance Answer C. Increase your following distance. Wet roads can increase stopping distances. Question 35. The main hazard of driving a tanker is A. The noise it makes B. The size of the vehicle C. The liquid cargo Answer. C. The liquid cargo. The movement of the liquid can affect the stability and control of the vehicle. Question 36. Before starting a trip with a tanker, you should A. Check the weather forecast. B. Ensure the tank is clean and free of residue. C. Fill the tank to the top. Answer. B. Ensure the tank is clean and free of residue. Residue can contaminate the next load or create a hazard. Question 37. When driving a tanker, sudden steering movements can A. Improve stability B. Cause the liquid to surge C. Increase speed Answer. B. Cause the liquid to surge. Sudden movements can cause the liquid to shift, affecting stability. Question 38. If you need to make an emergency stop in a tanker, you should A. Pump the brakes B. Use steady pressure on the brakes C. Use the parking brake Answer B. Use steady pressure on the brakes. This helps control the vehicle and prevent skidding. Question 39. In a tanker, the wave effect can be caused by A. Driving too slowly B. The movement of the liquid cargo. C. Wind hitting the side of the tanker. Answer. B. The movement of the liquid cargo. The liquid can create waves that affect the stability of the vehicle. Question 40. If you are involved in an accident while driving a tanker, you should A. Leave the scene immediately. B. Try to move the tanker off the road. C. Stay with the vehicle and call for help. Answer. 
C. Stay with the vehicle and call for help. It's important to ensure the safety of the scene and prevent further incidents. Question 41. The most common type of tanker accident is A. Head-on collisions B. Rollovers C. Rear-end collisions Answer B. Rollovers Due to their high center of gravity and liquid cargo, tankers are more prone to rollovers. Question 42. When driving a tanker on a bridge, you should A. Increase your speed to cross quickly B. Maintain a steady speed C. Stop before crossing Answer B. Maintain a steady speed This ensures you cross safely without putting undue stress on the bridge. Question 43. If you need to park your tanker on the side of the road, you should A. Leave the lights on B. Put out reflective triangles C. Both A and B Answer C. Both A and B It's important to make your vehicle visible to other drivers. Question 44. When driving a tanker in foggy conditions, you should A. Use high beam headlights B. Use low beam headlights C. Turn off all lights Answer B. Use low beam headlights This improves visibility without reflecting light back at you. Question 45. If your tanker starts to jackknife, you should A. Steer in the opposite direction B. Release the brakes C. Apply more brake pressure Answer B. Release the brakes. This can help straighten out the vehicle. Question 46. When driving a tanker, you should always be aware of A. The weight of the vehicle B. The height of the vehicle C. The liquid level in the tank Answer C. The liquid level in the tank. This affects the vehicle's center of gravity and stability. Question 47. In a tanker, the stopping distance is affected by A. The type of liquid B. The amount of liquid C. Both A and B Answer C. Both A and B Different liquids have different weights, and the amount of liquid can cause surges. Question 48. When driving a tanker in winter conditions, you should A. Use chains on all tires B. Increase following distance C. Drive in the leftmost lane Answer B. Increase following distance Slippery roads can increase stopping distances. Question 49. If a tanker is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS, it will A. Shorten the stopping distance B. Prevent wheel lockup C. Increase the stopping distance Answer B. Prevent wheel lockup ABS helps maintain steering control during hard braking. Question 50. When driving a tanker, you should always A. Drive in the leftmost lane B. Follow closely behind other vehicles C. Be prepared for the unexpected Answer. C. Be prepared for the unexpected. Due to the unique challenges of driving a tanker, always being prepared is crucial.